Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Grifflands, where I sound exactly the same as I did last episode. Uh, what were we doing? Had we had we visited our friend Pengamunt yet okay. today? I don't remember. We have this very good coin. Okay, no, today today he has the rare coins. So you know, I, I'm just I'm not wild about apply composure. This one's just, it's even more apply composure. I think we're sticking with our with our psychic coin. We want our, our heads flips to actually work against the opponent, not just for us. No amount of applying composure to my own face is going to cause me to win an argument. Yeah, that's right. You can see. I get it. It's a joke because there's so many eyes on the coin. I get where you're coming from. Pengamunt and I, we're like this. You Okay, that's, that's a gesture. You can't see what I'm doing with my hands. Simpatico is my point. Alright, uh, so we don't really have a ton of money. Oh, did I, was I told to do something? I have this vague memory that I was told to go see one of them first, but I can't remember which, which one it was. Um, it's probably, let's, let's go, let's go see Calandra. If, if I'm supposed to be seeing one of them first, I'm sure it's her. And also, maybe I'm not, maybe it's not even a real thing that I'm remembering. That's possible. Hey, Viren, how's it going? Alright, good morning, Rook. Are you ready to stand up for what's right? Probably. I have something for you, in any case. Calandra leafs through the papers. So, the boggers found themselves a weapons cache. Those bog-addled fools are more likely to worship them than put them to good use. In the right hands, those weapons could topple the barons. So, you want me to retrieve them? No, it's too big a job for just one person. And I don't trust this report. Not yet, at least. We'll discuss this again soon. I need to consider our options. I feel like I... Is she gonna think it's suspicious if I press her for details? Ah, you know what, she loves me. I'm sure she'll... I'm sure she'll just trust me blindly. Why wouldn't I? Wouldn't you? Look at that mustache. So, what are you going to do about the cash? Well, if it's real, I intend to take it. By force? If it comes to that, but there might be a better way. The boggers are a hard bunch to read. Who are these boggers? They worship the bog like it was some kind of living thing. And most of them are ex-baron. Too much free time, I guess, and they got philosophical. And they mostly keep to the deeper parts of the bog, so we don't encounter them much. Hmm. Alright, well, how can I be of service to the Rise while you're busy hatching plans? Well, there's always work to be done. So... We could get some money and a graft, or less money and a graft. These are very similar rewards. Uh, so we're stealing secret research data from the Barons, or we are... Ah, okay, one of our moles has stopped talking. Go go fix that. That does sound like a job I'd be well suited for. Now, you aren't our only secret weapon, you know. I'm not? This is staggering. I'm taken aback. Yeah, well, sometimes you gotta ferret out the secret from more than one direction. That is presumably how ferrets work. We have a mole in the barrens, and she hasn't been responding to our messages lately. Go figure out what's wrong. Yeah. Sounds easy enough. I'll show you where the mole lives. I suspect they're being watched, but you know the barons and can get closer than I can. But be careful, all right? I don't want them jeopardized any more than they already are. Oh, perish the thought. Or perish the baron who gets in my way. Either will do handily. Rook talks a big game. He, he talks like he'd commit a murder. But we all know. You notice something glinting in the mud. You know, I was thinking about this, like... Calandra was being very dismissive about the boggers acting like the bog is some kind of living thing. But it does... It does sort of seem to display intent, doesn't it? Usually hostile, but... It's a graft. It looks pretty dirty, but it might still work. You can't just jam stuff into your body because you found it on the ground. Whenever you play four diplomacy cards in a row, apply one composure to all friendly arguments. I mean, that seems not that good. 
it's not bad and it's it's totally like in our strategy and everything um it's it, like this is this is basically going to be a composure every couple of turns well you know we have enough free cards in our deck this is probably a composure to all of our arguments each turn yeah all right you pick up the graft it is intact but it looks like it's been out here for a long time it glistens with the fluids of the bog. Your attempts to wipe it clean only succeed in getting your hands dirty. So is it gonna... Oh, they don't tell us. They don't tell us what the downside will be. All right, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna fill my head with bog juice, I guess. You install the questionably hygienic graft and hope for the best. When the pain subsides, you take stock. The good news is the graft still works. The bad news is it was really quite dirty after all, and now so are you. Oh man, I got another... I got another Parasite. Well, I mean, so far the last Parasite hasn't been, uh, hasn't been much more than a nuisance, so it's probably fine. Hey, this ain't public property. I don't know who you are, but you better get the heck out of here before I bust in your face. Oh, I'm with Calandra. She wants to know why you haven't reported in lately. Calandra? I don't know her. And, and and if I did, I wouldn't admit to it. This sounds like the kind of thing that could blow one's cover. If, if I had cover to blow, that is. I see. You know, I suppose there are many threats that could blow one's cover on this side of the bog. Uh, oh, definitely. Like, like Cricket, for instance. She's a real snitch. And once she gets her paws on a juicy secret... Well, that, that could be a real threat to any operation. If you catch my meaning? I believe I do, but you won't catch me admitting it. Cricket spends most of her time in the rec center. If you could lure her out of there and into the open, we could, uh, uh you know, neutralize the problem. I do enjoy making things neutral. This is the worst spy banter Maybe ever. Maybe in the history of ever. Obviously, you are going to have to pay me for this service. This is going to make Delano dislike me, but we'll fix it later. Listen, I'll help you out, but I'm not doing it for free. You give me some cash up front, or maybe the barons are going to hear from me. You know, it said, it said, I was not, I did not understand that this was going to be like a, um, an extortion kind of thing. I thought we were just going to do some convincing. Well, I see no reason not to rig the coin. And then, yeah, let's do the thing. You sure do have an awful lot of resolve. Alright, so this card is now all nice and prepared. And then, I mean... It sure feels like we gotta just play the blacklist, right? The list is starting to get pretty long. Delano clearly wants the conversation to end. Well, you know, there's a real easy way to get to that. Uh, yeah. I am I am digging this, uh, this prepare graft that we got. So, gains three composure for each hostility that you draw. Not very good, honestly. This will give me back. Yeah, you know what? So don't do it. I would, in fact, like to rig for. Uh, do we have anything that we actually care about the preparation of? No, yeah, I should have. I should have played my visionary bluffs first. Actually, that was um, that was definitely an error. Well, look at that. I drew my red card. Uh, so we are in a place where gambling makes sense. I have three actions. I mean, we're not going to get there. Gosh, I'm going to take, like, kind of a lot of damage here. Are we rigged? Yeah, we're rigged. There's my helmet. We found it. I know my, my hand size was full already. I was just really looking for my helmet. Although, I guess... Why did I think I still had a prepare left in my hand? I don't know. Find it, finding the helmet right now turns out not to actually be that useful. Uh, let's flip some coins. Alright, you are filled with doubt. And now... 
Do we just boosted head split? We don't have anything in our hand that needs, like... Yeah. If we had something that needed XP, I would have been willing to go for that instead, but this is fine. Yep, even more earworms. At the rate that we're adding um, doubt, I don't think the number of parasites that we're holding on to is going to matter all that much. Uh, do I want these back right now? Yeah. So we're taking seven damage to that. We're not going to be able to compose our way out of this, but... No, there's no but. We just, we just, we just don't have, don't have a way to solve the problem. All right, and then we may as well save ourselves three damage. All right, something pretty miraculous would have to happen here in order for you to be able to survive this turn. Uh, does not matter, it turns out. Alright, we're definitely going to play Dead Draw. It's just good fun. And then, I, you know, I should have sequenced this such that we could play Cash Out. Ah, well. We're going to just flip some coins real quick. And then blow everything up. Hooray. Oh, right, I over... I over-rigged us. Or I, I rather, I overdid our rigging. Not that it matters, because obviously... Obviously, the game is over. Alright, a little sloppy. Perhaps a little tiny bit sloppy. Uh, I don't think we want any of that. Now you got leverage. I respect that. I don't like it, but I respect it. Alright, here. Too. Wow. Wow, that was a lot of money. Alright, I'm in. Well, certainly. I've already come all this way to talk to you. Except we didn't talk. In fact, I, I don't even know what you look like. Detusha. Ah, so I've momentarily gone blind. Of course, at my age, it's to be expected. I, I'm sorry, did someone say something? I can't hear a damn thing. Again, just the worst spy banter. Uh, the, the door is over that way. You best see yourself out. Well, you'd better do it. I paid you good money. And remember, don't let anyone else hear you talking about me to rick it on barren property. You get them out of the rec center before you make your move. It sounds too easy. It sounds too straightforward. You enter the rec center. It smells of barren sweat. It's probably metallic, I'm guessing. Uh, it turns out this area is for spark barons only. Uh, I, have, I have identification, right? Yeah, I'm working for Philemo. You can check my contract on file. Alright, there you go. The guard ambles off. After some searching, you find Ricket working on her reps. Uh, I think it would be best to take you out of the rec center on account of that's what I was told to do. Delano sent me. She's ready to discuss the terms of your, uh, silence. Shh, don't let anyone hear you. As I was about to say, we should go somewhere private to discuss this further. Okay, that's not a big deal. Uh, yes, we do have a thing that we care about the preparation of. Let's open with Visionary Bluff. Okay, so we got some we got some pretty solid stuff here. I feel like... I mean, I guess there's no reason that we need to rig first. So, Earworm on the first turn feels a little bit more like something I should actually make sure that we're, um... We're getting rid of. I don't want to spend an action that way, obviously, but. So it'll just add another earworm to the draw pile. But if I don't play it, is it hatching? It's it's not it's not actually hatching, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and 
play it. That'll deal with it for right now, at least. And then... Do I want promoted trickery? I don't think I do. I think I want to just do boosted head split into normal flip into cash out. It was not a lot of damage, but it was better than the other stuff in our hand. Okay, those are both cards I would much rather have had. Let's prepare the helmet itself. I guess I do have a head turner. Alright, <laughs> apparently feeling pretty mighty here in this conversation. Uh so I would I would like to fix the silly thing I did. And damaging that's not gonna accomplish very much. Oh, but I guess if I'm gonna spend an action to prepare a card, I should do it with this. Just for the XP. Uh, and then I guess there's not really much reason to... Here, I mean, let's do this. Let's incept more doubt, always. And then... Yeah, I guess... Well... Do I want to spend my last rigged flip? I think so. Alright, what is... Uh, yeah, one of these. What is this? Ah, okay. Deal 5 damage to deal 8 damage. So obviously, the blacklist is just going to immediately win us the fight. I'm gonna throw some of that up first. Uh, so we're not rigged right now, actually, which makes me a little reluctant to... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna... I'm just... Well, actually, Blacklist is... No, it's still lethal. Well, not here. Right, because that'll lower... That'll lower her health by eight, so... Spend one influence. This card gains three damage until the end of the negotiation. So it's a thing you really want to play multiple times per battle. I... It's not bad, and we're likely to have the influence to do it now that we have, like, one or two cards that generate influence sort of incidentally, and then also we start battles with some influence. But I just... Be a shot. I don't think that card's good enough to take up yeah, a slot in our deck. Sure. sure. Lead the way, Grifter. We can discuss details as we walk. Alright, so just all the way out into the bog here. They do want me to commit a murder. I mean, if we were to not murder Ricket and just let her get away, I have to imagine the outcome of that would not be great either. You come to a nicely secluded spot. So, where's Delano? You, uh, gonna say something? This is creeping me out. You're not... You're, you're not gonna kill me, are you? Dekosu. Well, okay, okay, hold that thought. Because I figured, hey, you know what? I should take a vacation. I could just disappear, and Delano won't know the difference. And not if you cover for me. How's that sound? Uh, well, Ricket will love you. Or I could kill Ricket, and Ricket will dislike that. But, like, but, like, kind of who cares? I mean... I do feel like Rook is in the business of making friends. And we don't really need money, and also, we won't be liked as much if we go for the money. It's possible that we will get in trouble for this. Maybe, maybe Cricket will not lay low as much as we are hoping, but I'm gonna do it. Alright, fine. Get out of here. And don't let anyone ever see you again. Thank you. You start formulating a plan to convince Delano that you actually did your job. You know, lying. When you sleep, gain full experience on a random card. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. It's a little bit late for that, but still pretty good. All right, well, I guess let's go turn it in. It does feel like this is uh, not exactly the outcome that uh, Delano was looking for. 
Hi, stranger. I've never met you before, and this is our first conversation. But apropos of nothing, have you taken care of our little problem? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What problem? Hey, it seems to me we never had one, yes? There's no way they're going to be able to follow that. Uh, I think we're just... This is this is the card. Okay, not a big deal there. Do we want to... I guess I don't actually have any options here. I was, I was about to say, do I want to, like, draw or something? But we will not, in fact, be doing that. Uh, I don't... Whatever. Look at all this influence. Alright, it's a pretty good start. Oh no, my blacklist. Now, to be clear, we don't need to use the blacklist against Delano again. Uh, obviously, we fought here already, so... It will not get us a bunch of benefit to use the blacklist. That said, we may still want to get it back and use it, because, you know... It sure is a lot of damage. Uh, I think I would rather have the double rig. So do we want to get those cards back right now? Yeah. Do I blacklist or do I dead draw? I'm going to dead draw. We need the XP. Okay, so we have one action left. I am going to play the Earworm for free. Do I have a... I do have a prepare. Okay. I really love rig heads four times. That's that's a very compelling... Uh, very compelling line of text there. Alright, so cash out will be five damage. I mean, I guess that's what we're doing. It's a little bit less average damage than Speculative Grumble, but I do want to get my XP. Alright, I think we're holding around just fine. Uh, let's prepare this one first. Uh, so if we do another visionary bluff, we're gonna um, we're gonna end up over the top on cards here. So maybe let's just take a moment to do some actual work. So we need to add a little bit more composure to this. I mean, we're just, we're just not exactly going to get there. I think that's, that's a thing we have to be prepared for. I don't think that this prepare matters. Oh, that our hand size is a little bit lower. Okay, there we go. We found one. Uh, sadly, a little bit too late, I think. So this is just three damage. This is just four damage, effectively. Or we could promote. Try to get some nonsense going. Look for, look for a card that's going to let us cheat in some way. I'm going to take it. All right. Not really what I was looking for, but I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised. This is going to hurt. Again with stealing my blacklist. Well, that was pretty fortuitous for that to end up there. Uh, let's also do this. And then we dead draw, right? That could have gone a little bit better. That, that, that could have been a tiny bit more compelling. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what we prepare. Uh, 
I'd probably, yeah, I'd much rather do this, right? I mean, this is gonna gain me an action, and I, I can do it. I can do the other one afterward. Okay, let's put some damage on that, so that we can now do this. Just really maximize the overflow damage there. All right, the math is starting to look pretty bad for old Delano here. And again, again, my cool cards. Uh, doesn't actually matter what's prepared here. This card is drawn, lose one action and expend this card. Man, stupid parasites. So preparing a card doesn't really do anything in our current situation. I mean, I I only have to get a couple of damage through. Alright, we extremely win. And we got to level up on a card and everything. It almost couldn't have gone better. So this one was already pretty good, I feel like. Do we... Why would you choose to bring the maximum damage up by two? I guess if you have enough influence, this is actually better because you'll just always be doing the eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think I would prefer the consistency a little bit here. And do we actually want to take any of this stuff? At the start of your turn, choose a card in your hand and prepare it. Well, obviously, we kind of already have that going on. I think I'm just going to leave it. I don't think we need more copies of Dead Draw. It is a cool card. No no two ways about that. I mean, it is like it's action neutral. It draws you two cards. Maybe, maybe it is worth having a second one. Yeah, you know what? To get you. And if we did have one, well, it's certainly long gone by now. All right, get your meaning loud and clear, Rook. I appreciate all you've done. Even if you, you know, officially didn't do anything at all. Well, it's nice to be appreciated, I guess. Kind of, sort of. Even if I wasn't really appreciated at all. Mission accomplished. You should get your next report in a timely fashion. That's better news than I've had all day. And thank the tides for that. Good work, Rook. You should clear out before anyone sees us talking. Well, I was never even here. There's a lot of that going around. Also, that's a lot of money. Uh, so... The arc loader would be fine for us. I think I might, well, I was going to say I think I might turn these down um, so as to maintain a slot for something that is like a slam dunk, but I guess I can just have more slots installed fairly easily. Whenever you draw five or more cards after your initial hand in a single turn, gain one bait. That's going to happen fairly frequently. So is this, hopefully. I'm going to take the Locust Breaker. All right, easy enough. Working the double cross is easy. Uh, Rook could get us hooked up with some Admiralty Weaponsmith, or we could go see Pluck and receive a Spark Grenade. You know what? Let's let's step on over to the gun show with all of our extremely large number of dollars. Rook? They said you were dead. Ah, they say a lot of things, Frizz. Some of them are even true. Ah, but never the ones you want, am I right? Anyway, what are you doing here? Working private security, pays better than the Admiralty ever did, and I set my own hours. I'm here looking for freelance clients. You know anyone local who can pay top dollar for good weapons? Yes, me. It's me. Uh, I would, in fact, like to ask Frizz to tweak my pistols. That seems okay. You remember these? <laughs> You're still using those old things, huh? Yeah, us old things have to stick together. I'm surprised they're still intact. I was practically a child when I built those. 
Oh, you think you could do better now? Well, certainly, with the right parts and access to my tools in about a week. Uh, what could you do with five minutes and diminished expectations? Boy, if I had a nickel. I can make a couple of adjustments, I suppose. So, I would rather lose charge chambers, right? We're reducing the amount of, like, the theoretical possible amount of defense we get for free. But we're playing this, um, we're playing this fill to overcharge game so frequently. Yeah, just, just go ahead and cut down on the number of chambers. Yeah, that's easy. I can take one off for free. I can take two off if you pay for parts. Hmm. Do I think that that's actually valuable? You know what? I'm going to go for it. I sure do have a lot of money. Frizz opens up a toolkit and spends some time working on the pistols. There. Good as new. I had better even. Yeah, thanks, Frizz. This will come in handy. It was for old time's sake. So why are you here? Like, unlike the barons, to allow outside influence. Well, I'm on leave, actually, so I'm here in an unofficial capacity. Well, Cupa. Of all the places you could choose to spend your leave, you picked Grout Bog? That's a working holiday. Kupelson. I make weapons. You know, there's a lot of demand for that here. Okay, that's fair enough. Sushua Ki. It's been nice seeing you, Frizz. Pipona. Likewise, Rook. And my leave's up, so I'm back to Murder Bay. Now, don't get yourself killed out there. Shutsona. Uh, it's usually the other people we have to worry about, anyway. Rook is very confident. He's got the kind of confidence that definitely gets you murdered. Makes the thematically and, and dramatically appropriate thing to happen. Murder. You encounter Melba, near paralyzed with fear, by the side of the bog. Cupertessa. There's something back there, lying in the bog. Tateme. Something big. Kionashi. Big and hiding. Kapisha. Maybe this swamp gas has gotten to you. No, really. I saw it after stumbling across this treasure buried in the mud. Right. Treasure. I mean, obviously, we should, first of all, have her guide us to whatever she's talking about, and secondly, potentially use her as a human shield. Look, I'll come see what you're on about, but you're coming with me. Okay, not a bad start here. I mean, there's absolutely no reason not to open with this. So gain four composure whenever Rook creates a new argument. I wonder if that will apply to arguments being created on her side of the circle. It looks like probably yes, given that given that they have four composure now. Uh, let's go for that dead draw. Boy, not ideal. I have one action left. Well, honestly, as much as I kind of hate this. Just get that done. We'll cash out. No, sorry. What am I talking about? We don't we don't cash out until after we flipped our car. I should really try not to damage racer. I'm I'm way behind. I started way behind in that particular race. Uh, wow. Rough one. You know, suspicion will do that. Uh. I guess boosted bank. So plus three bonus damage to visionary head turner, which doesn't. Quite allow it to destroy this, but it gets us in the neighborhood. And then, I mean, we may as well dead draw now. Okay. One cost blacklist is a pretty solid card. And then, there's no sense in drawing cards we're not going to play anyway. Now let's just move on. Oh, right, and also the earworm thing. Ah, uh, boy. Well, we can play this earworm to pull it out of our deck for a moment for free. 
May as well do that again. And actual gambling. Totally not rigged gambling. What a bizarre idea. Who would do such a thing? Okay, I think we got there. It was uh, it was touch and go for a minute. Uh, so if we play the dead draw right now, we're not actually going to be able to draw two cards to reinforce here. Let's play you. That makes room for dead draw. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and play you as well. Uh, does it matter what we have prepared? No, not at the moment. See, now it does. Look at the look at how good my sequencing is. And then we probably just yeah. All right, all we have to do is not die for like one more cycle here. Yeah, I really like the doubt coin. I'm I am a big fan. Apply one composure to a random friendly argument every time you play a card, as long as this is prepared. You know, it's not awful. And it's it's a cool effect, but I I just don't know that we want to add more composure based cards to our deck. I think we need offense. I really hope I don't regret this. Melba leads you ever so slowly to the area she indicated. You discover some long forgotten Rentorian relics half buried in the underbrush. Plus you too? Aha! What did I tell you? Okay up there? Now, where's that giant thing I saw? Suddenly, a brief rustling in the ferns alerts you to the emerging shadow of an enormous <laughs> lizard. Oh, there it is. I knew I would I knew I'd regret this. Well, it doesn't seem that huge. So remove one stack whenever you play an attack card targeting the Grocket. When removed, the Grocket will do something terrifying. Okay. It ignores any non-piercing damage less than or equal to eight, but loses a stack of this when attacked. All right, so remember, we have this, it's a graft, right? Or no, it might, it might be a boon. Yeah, Excavator. First item card we play in battle is played twice. So I probably do just wanna throw out the giant stinger. That's a lot of wounds to start with. So I only have... So this is just gonna give us two actions and two overcharge. I mean, it's still pretty good. I was trying to figure out a way that, like, if there was some way to do this such that we would get more charge. I could I could have played Crank first, but that was still going to leave us in a pretty rough spot as far as, like, time to attack. It was going to lead to us not doing a lot of offense on the first turn, and you know how I feel about that. Also, hooray for 14 to 16 damage. And then, surprise jump cut. Uh, <laughs> let me explain what happened here. A thing, a thing occurred. Uh, so this is SB from the morning after what you were just watching. Um, I didn't get to start recording yesterday until pretty late for a variety of reasons. One of which was trying to get a sound out of this new microphone that I'm happy with, which I'm not entirely there on yet. Um, and there was also some health stuff going on. And basically, I started recording very, very late. And by the time I started the Griftlands recording, I was feeling pretty crappy and pretty drained. But I was like, you know, I already didn't put out videos on Monday. I really ought to do, uh, I really ought to do the thing. So I probably should not have started recording, but I did. Uh, and y'all saw the 40 minutes or whatever of that episode there. Uh, and then right at the moment where I inserted the edit here, uh, I fell asleep. I fell asleep sitting up in my chair in the middle of a fight. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. So I did wake up a couple minutes later and groggily finish the battle while trying to rescue it and be like, well, you know, I'll just cut out the part where I was asleep, but so we're just after the battle. Hi, it's me. It's a new morning and I'm awake now. Uh, 
time management. Time management's difficult. It's it's hard for everybody, and it's even worse if your brain has all the things that mine does. <laughs> all these extra features. Uh, so let's continue, shall we? And also, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this microphone out yet. Uh, like I said in the Slipways series, over the next couple of days, it's probably gonna be a little bit of an audio journey as I try to figure out the appropriate settings for this thing. Anyway. We defeated the Grocket. We upgraded a card. We got some stuff. And now we're going to talk to Calandra again. I can't believe our luck. You know, at first I thought you were as likely to sabotage as help me. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And so far, you're a ray of hope. Huh. It's not like you to speak so optimistically, Calandra. I'll take it as a compliment. Good, because that's how, that's how I meant it. And it'll take another miracle to make me repeat it. And thanks to you and those boggers, we've got a chance to end the barons once and for all. Or at least, end their tyranny. Ah, two Oshnus with one Salt Lake, I take it. That's not... I get what you're doing here, but that's, there's no way that that is a real phrase that people say in this world. I just don't buy it. Got it in one. But what we need is for Philemo to follow your lead. Time to milk your old war buddy for what he's worth, Rook. Whatever you gotta do to make him uh, to make him sure you're his loyal friend, you do it. All of the workers under me would gladly die for the cause. A small sacrifice if it meant freedom for us all. That is quite the commitment, and I bet if we asked the workers, they would not necessarily all agree with that. We signed contracts that will follow us to our graves, if not see us all there sooner. Or if not see us there all the sooner. None of us are afraid of permanence. Well, okay, yeah, I guess if the if the situation's bad enough, as someone who is certainly going to die in debt, I guess I can see it, actually. Alright, so let's continue playing Philemo. I mean, listen, Philemo loves me. It should be easy. Rook, where in the deepest... Oh, uh, wait, he was that like... <clears throat> Rook, where in the deepest trenches have you been? I've heard numerous reports of the Rise having some lead on the Poggers, but nothing has come back to me. I, I don't know how to do voice. I got, no, I got no voice work training, if that wasn't clear. I'm sure at this point you're well aware. Surely you must have heard something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard something. It's true. Calandra has a lead on a cache of Bogger weapons. Aha. I suppose I shouldn't have had that messenger issued five demerits for falsehood. Ah, well, no sense ruminating over past transgressions. We can only move forward, eh? Oh, I'm so mad I can barely even... <laughs> yes, and so I await your orders. What would you have me do? My dear captain, those words are truly the music of the deep. What I would have you do is follow Calandra along on her little mission. And when the time is right... See that those weapons get put to good use. Yeah, alright, so we're playing everybody against everybody, except we're kind of actually playing... We're slightly more playing Calandra... No, wait, we're slightly more playing Philemo. We're a little bit more on Calandra's side, but in reality, we're on the side of some other person outside of the narrative who I don't even know about, which is going to make it a little bit difficult to fulfill Rook's uh, ambitions here. Like, I think this is a really interesting way to write a spy story, or not, not just to, like, to create a spy story in an interactive medium where the player has to have agency. Because it really does, it creates this, like, very weird cloak and dagger feeling that you would not get if you were as filled in on the thing as Rook is. And it's a very different experience than, like, reading something in a, in a non-interactive um, medium would be. Idle hands become slippery tentacles, as they say, which is, which is good right we like tentacles what do you have to keep a fellow of my skill occupied lest the tides catch me up in their whims uh, there's always something let me look through the day's reports so get a graft okay it's all graphs it's all graphs all the time basically rescue a baron from a rise trial or investigate a crime scene i think this one is likely to hurt the workers less it sounds like Ah, you should find this one interesting. Should remind you of the front lines, I imagine. Seems the Rise have gotten a hold of some explosives. 
Do you know where they plan to use them? Yeah, before. Planned. They've already been used. The ingrates blew up one of the workers' dormitories. They blew up their own housing. Why? Uh, perhaps to make a point? Spark Barons sweep the bunks during shifts to ensure no one's smuggling out any relics. Fortunately, the bombs went off too early. All they managed to kill was a couple of their own stragglers. Uh, good luck aside, we need to seize this opportunity to, opportunity to vilify the rise. There's an investigator looking into it, but you've got more experience with this kind of sabotage. Find out who's responsible, or at least who could believably be held responsible. And we'll find a suitable use for their, uh, disciplinary proceedings. Okay, let's do a really bad job at this investigation, shall we? I do appreciate that the game's not trying to, like, both sides this at all. Like, it's very clear that one of these sides is profoundly evil and the other one isn't. Um, and, yeah, I would, it would, it would to some degree leave a bad taste in my mouth if they were trying to portray the workers as, uh, as, as bad as the bosses. You find Delano flanked by security and berating a trio of unfortunate civilians. It does, it, like, it kind of does feel like that's, <laughs> there's a particular game company or two who I can think of where that's exactly what I would expect them to do. And I guess I'm just thankful that Clay is smarter and better <laughs> than those companies. Now you lot are hiding something, and if I have to whip it out of you... Uh, excuse me? Oh, Philemo's pet grifter is here. Just what I need. More meddling. Very very good spy work here from Delano, pretending not to know us. I assure you, I'll keep my meddling to a minimum. That's, <laughs> that's totally what I always do. What exactly happened here? Well, the rise blew up the dorm. Well, I'm aware of that much, thank you. I was more interested in the greater context. Greater context? The Rise are anarchic miscreants. They stole a bomb, they used it. They even were dumb enough to blow up some of their own. Dumb enough? Or clever enough? What? Who are the suspects? Yibit is a worker who lives in the pod. He was late for his shift the day before the explosion. Probably spent the time getting the explosives. Pluck works in the deeper bog and has been seen loitering in the area. No doubt scouting out opportunities for vandalism. And finally, GT is the foreman of the local dig pit. You'd think she'd know who butters her bread, but she hasn't met quota all quarter. I'll bet real shills she's letting her rise buddies shirk and organize. You seem pretty convinced that they're all guilty. Well, everybody's guilty of something. I guess you would know. Alright, I'm going to talk to the suspects. You figure out which one did it, and then we can talk about the next step. Very menacing. Uh, I guess GT's the foreman, right? Let's start there. What, you got questions for me? Yeah, I got some questions for you. Uh, I mean, should we, should we just... It's interesting that we can do a thing that is us interrogating, the player interrogating GT, or we can have Rook interrogate GT which works out differently, and I imagine probably ends more effectively. Like th We're going to have to do this step no matter what, I bet. I'm glad Pluck's here. Pluck will, Pluck will back us up. I guess, let's start with the normal questions. So what do you know about this bombing? Well, how should I know? I just work here. You haven't met your quota lately. That sounds like something the Rise would like. I, I just want people to like me. Is that a crime? God, I hope not. It depends on the people, I guess. And then we attacked her for no reason. No, I mean, let's go for the interrogation. My resolve is not in a great place here, so... We're going to have to be a little bit careful. That's right, we did, we did sort of make an enemy, didn't we? Uh, prepare the good card. Alright, well, that's annoying, but it's not really that big of a deal. Oh, this is cool. Damage uh, spills over to this argument before your core argument. Not very good, unfortunately, on a turn where the core argument is the only one being targeted. Uh, we need to rig. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any rigging available. Let's see if we can if we can find some here. We cannot. Uh, I'll take this at least. And I guess let's just hope that we actually get heads here. 
Hmm. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to fire our negotiation flourish. We're in a little bit of trouble. We might be able to get some some reasonable damage out of this and hopefully it'll end up with the coin showing heads. Awesome. Couldn't have gone better. So, let's play Yeah, let's just go ahead and knock this thing out. We can do that pretty easily. We, d we still don't have any rigs, but I guess I kind of need to draw these cards. Yeah, let's let's just do this now. I'd be better off playing Pleasant Trees. I mean, I want to... I probably want to play Dead Draw while we still have an action left. Alright, cash out. Already looking pretty fantastic. And... Do we want to burn the earworm? It's at hatch one. So when this card's effect is triggered. So I'm assuming if I play it, we the, the hatch doesn't decrement then, right? So we probably do not, in fact, want to do that. Uh, let's, let's play this. Is there something here I would rather? Okay, I'm glad that I glad that I did that, but it, we're, we're still not going to be able to play this, unfortunately. It does not become free when prepared. Well, all right, I guess let's play Sifting Pleasantries. Oh, that's right. We were able to generate a bait, which moved the thing off of our core argument, and now it'll hit the Stoic instead, which makes our earlier composure play not good. I forgot about the bait generation. I'm not, not necessarily ordering my plays optimally here. Uh, it's a shame we can't actually play the blacklist, but what we can do is cash out in a very serious way. And you know what? We generated... Um, Generate a bunch of composure on the bait as well. So I think whatever happens when that earworm hatches is going to happen at the uh, at the end of the turn then. Or at the end of this battle. So it doesn't really matter what we prep. And sadly we did not get cost reduction on our dead draw. Okay, there we go. There's a little bit of a little bit of rigging, finally. I don't our whole, our whole game plan is based on the idea that every time we flip the coin, it will come up heads. So when we don't find rigging, it's actually, like, a big problem. I'm gonna go ahead and go for this. Oh, that's a shame. We drew a card that naturally costs two. Well, the hip flask isn't gonna do anything for me here. I guess we just play Cordial Pleasantries and pass. It's not very good. Yeah, we definitely need to get rid of that thing. And we may as well expend this and not, not fill our deck with more garbage. And you know, the doubt is doing lots of, uh, lots of very good work, as ever. Doesn't actually matter what we do here. Definitely, wait, do I have, I have no card draw. Okay, so the, the prep on this doesn't really matter. Uh, we have four rigs now. We are not particularly close to victory on this one. So are these just not... Because we only have a single packet of four damage incoming, and that's from this intent. So are these arguments just not working because they can only target the core argument, but currently they're not allowed to do that because some bait exists? I'm not exactly sure why we're not seeing the damage packets that should be coming off of these things, but I do feel like we should, um, we should get rid of them anyway. I think I am going to do this. Let's protect the bait because it's doing good work for us. Overflow some damage here. Oh right, right, right. I forgot about I forgot about delegator. Well, that's actually a, a problem here. <laughs> yep, as not good at all. In fact, okay. Uh, I need. Well, I guess I need to prepare this. We need some composure, actually. Okay, the, the doubt is going to her dome again, which is helpful. 
So we want to hit that thing for exactly four if we can. I mean, a, a boosted head split is fine. Here, let's open with this. Let's see a couple more cards before we go making any decisions. Okay. So yeah, let's let's do this. Crap one of these. And then we are going to be able to get the visionary head turner into the prepared position, even without a even without a prepare. Although I do think we are going to do this more for the draw card than for anything else. So exactly four damage. So let's just make sure we stay focused here. And then we still have lots of actions left. We can we can dig through a little bit here. Okay, there we go. And your name is not on my list. No, your name totally is on my list. But still, I think just closing this battle is probably the right thing to do. Hooray for cards that do 18 damage, huh? Okay. Get the dead draw upgrade. It becomes cheaper and does the same thing. Yep, that's fine. In fact, that's totally great, actually. I'm very happy with that. Double this card's damage and gamble. It's interesting that it doesn't gamble unless you have the right side of the coin already up. That's kind of cool. And it's 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 actually kind of neat because like this card would actually be good in a red deck. It fl it flips the coin if it's on the wrong side for you. That's a that's a cool design. Uh, I think we're gonna take it actually. I know it's it's a little on the expensive side, but it's a lot of damage. We're going to pretty reliably get that effect. And, you know, sometimes it'll be free, because graphs and whatnot. Yeah, I did it, and I'd do it again. Wow, she just really gave that up entirely. Uh, I mean, do we want to try talking to the other people around here for additional context or anything? I don't know that my... I don't know that my resolve can bear another argument, but... You know, every person we interrogate is more XP for the cards, is more is more progress on our graphs, because these are not all leveled up, right? Yeah, we need we need we need a couple more couple more arguments. And without them having delegator, because they're not they're not boss types, without them having delegator, it's probably gonna be easier. You know, Pluck likes us. Pluck's got a, a resolve debuff. Alright, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Let's see what we get out of this. Uh, we will prep this one. All right, so we're gonna start with, nope, we're not gonna start with Pale Dead Draw. Hold on, I don't have any rigs. Okay, so your thing is just composure when I create an argument. Uh, and at the moment, you're gonna hit me really, really, really hard. I really need to draw. Okay, no luck. Well, are we just going to lose? Do I, do I just lose? Is that where I'm at? I guess I can do this. Lowering your damage by one would make it so that if I generate enough. How does that, how does that thing work? It was a graft, right? Whenever you draw five or more cards after your initial hand, gain a bait. And all we would need is to draw, is, is to get the bait. We wouldn't need to put any composure on it or anything. Yeah. Now let's prepare this. And then playing this is going to give us preparation on the other one. Uh, do I want to do this now? I don't actually have a way of gambling, I guess. The rigging right at this moment is not ideal. It doesn't, it doesn't help very much. Thankfully, we have some influence. So Okay, that's something. So I am... I am going to be able to draw cards again. And this will set off our thing. So I'm like, I'm looking at playing the blacklist here is probably just not available to us, right? We, do, we need to do something to save ourselves. So let's go ahead and play... Do we want to resolve this by playing Visionary Bluff into rigged clear head or do we want to just headstrong rationale 
have that be the way that we don't die, and then spend the one point, like, doing damage or something. I guess either way, we're playing rigged clearhead. It's just, it's a matter of which, which way we want to not die. Let's do this way. That uh, doesn't matter what we prep, we're just doing that to have a bunch of rigs for later. And I think we should be able to clean this up pretty quickly now that we have our coin flips set the way we want them. So playing the earworm, letting the earworm happen did not cause it to hatch. So maybe it's I have to play it to make the hatch thing happen? Is there anything in here that we actually need prepared? No, it doesn't matter. So I do sort of want to play it, but again, we have to make sure we don't die first. Uh, irritable definitely has to get dealt with. But this is a good time for a boosted head split. And then we played the not upgraded dead draw, which is it's a little awkward. It's a lot of... It's a lot of our actions spent. But this is exactly what we were hoping to draw. Okay, and now... I need to live. No, we lose, right? I don't I don't have enough damage. So let's see. 3 to 5 plus a gamble plus a gamble it gets us to 8 damage on this. So we could get there. It is it is possible. Oh, this card's free. Yeah, no, we're fine. I was totally missing that the cost of that card had been reduced. Oh no, wait, maybe I had already calculated that in, because I was like, I thought I was going to be able to play both and then play the cash out, but we only had one action left. That's right. Well, we lost the argument. It was bound to happen eventually. I wonder what happens if, if you run out of resolve and the opponent runs out of resolve in the same step in that way. Can I... Can negotiations be a draw? All right, fair enough. Well, we're not going to get anything else until we have fought somebody or had a drink to resolve our uh, to, to increase our resolve. So I guess let's just go back to Delano and tell her what happened. Uh, it turns out we could pin the blame on Yibit. You have no resolve and will automatically fail this negotiation. It feels like I should yeah just do this one. Yeah, we have our bomber inspector. GT did it and was, like, very eager to tell me that for some reason. GT, you're sure? Uh, quite, yes. Huh, I mean, wouldn't have guessed that. But if it ever turns out you're wrong, at least it'll be you explaining it to Philemo. So, are we done? Ha, <laughs> done. No, you gotta escort him to the interrogation site for questioning. You have fun. Okay, GT dislikes me. She told me straight up, like, what did she think was going to happen there? I, we've definitely had in, in interactions with GT before. I wonder if GT thought I would protect her or something, maybe? I don't know. You sense that you are being followed. All right, Grifter. Hand over GT and we'll let you walk away. But if you don't, then I'll have to kill you. It's just the way it is. Uh, okay, so... I don't really want to fight a bunch of Rise, but I am a little worried that if I hand over GT, it's going to require me to talk my way out of Philemo being suspicious about that, and that's not something I can do if I have no resolve. I guess I could go get a drink. Yeah, I'm going to hand over GT. I'm going to I'm going to work for the Rise here. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go get our drink on a little bit, get some resolve back so that we can trick Philemo. You size up the opposition and decide not to risk your life for the job. It's not exactly the calculation I made. Ha! Huh, so long, sucker! Now get out of here before we kill you to make a point. Oh, wow, that didn't involve... We didn't, in fact, have the opportunity to, uh, to do trickery about that at all. That's a little unclear, because I feel like we've had exactly this kind of situation come up before, and we were able to go back and lie to Philemo about what happened. So I feel like the game sort of set up an expectation in me that that was going to uh, go very differently than it did. Hiku is secretly meeting with a contact. You have a chance to eliminate them quietly before the meeting. Is Hiku the one person who hates me? 
Is that why I'm getting this option? Ah, yes. Well, getting into a fight would be a way of restoring our resolve without spending money or gaining bad cards, so... That's not a bad idea. This will give us an enfeebling ray, which seems fine. Yeah, I really, I really wouldn't put it any better than fine. Let's go, let's go take care of this. You spot Hiku standing alone in a clearing, waiting for someone else. You might not have that much time before their contact arrives. So we could just go for it, or we could wait and gather intel. The thing is... I don't particularly need Hiku to be alive, and also, I really, really, really want to get in a fight here. Yeah, because we, we, we need to win a battle to restore our resolve, right? You sneak as close to Hiku as you can while staying hidden and then jump out. Guns at the ready. Contact arriving in five turns. Okay, so we got a... We have a pretty tight timer on this. So... I mean, we probably want to open with Giant Stinger. Every time it lets us do this, we're going to do it. That card is pretty amazing if you get it twice. And then, like, Accelerant. I don't really want to play Accelerant to level it. I want to play Kick twice. I mean, there's not really a reason not to just play Free Blast. We do a lot of damage early in a fight. Yeah, double double kick is so much damage because both kicks benefit from the uh, from the wounds and everything. But accelerant is is ready to level. Yeah, all right. And then a charged barrage here, I believe, is the card that I picked up at the at the end of the uh, battle with the rocket. Obviously, if we have overcharge, this seems pretty bananas. We'll just work on leveling that as well. And I don't think this battle is going to be anywhere near difficult enough to justify the use of a flourish. Oh, hey. The thing did the thing. While this is in your hand, gain two power. Take two damage whenever you play a card. Oh, good. But at least it has a it has a zero cost expend. Yeah, let's... And then it also is going to hatch. Let's just go ahead and expend it for right now. I am going to play Energy Loop. Am I... We should gain charge before we spend charge so that the gain stuff becomes overcharge. Gain two defense. Man, we are going to take a lot of damage this turn. Like, a lot, a lot of damage. But I do want to start getting tempered established. We are going to boosted crackle. And then get some free energy looping. You know, a little bit of bonus healing every battle really adds up quickly. Alright, I have been made to boot. And also, check it out. It's a bog cyst. When destroyed, the attacker gains three mending. Okay. Very interesting. So, a source of healing. I mean, I think the, the best thing we can do is just end the fight, right? I don't I think that's probably pretty uncontroversial. Um, so let's crank so that the crank will level up. And then you're gonna take 15 from the dog. So I only have to I only have to push a little bit here. I'm hoping for yeah, card draw. We have lethal in hand, I'm just I I wanna draw cards that we can still get XP on. Play one of those as well. Okay. Just trying to maximize our combat growth. Also, hey, our graft upgraded. Draw four extra cards at the start of every turn, <laughs> but it doesn't reduce the damage. So, more options, but probably this is going to be one extra damage every turn of combat. You know what? Yeah, I, I will take that for an extra card. It is a little scary. It's fine. We have some reliable healing now. Uh, the Heavy Cleaver deals a lot of damage, applies a lot of bleed. We don't really have a lot of uses for bleed, so probably, like, we don't really have much of a way to influence this. It's probably just going to be three bleed ticking out, but that means the card does quite a lot of damage for a single action. 
All right, apply more Scorched and Burn or apply it to all enemies. So then you're, you're getting the initial burn damage on everybody and damage bouncing on everybody. I think I would much rather have have it be more single target effective. We already have um, ricochet shenanigans and stuff. Like, we're, we're good at fighting crowds. Gain more charge or more defense? I think it's got to be more charge the way we're the way we're running things here. So we don't really have that many cards in our deck that still need um, still need XP. We kind of need to get rid of all these hunker downs. Uh, it, it feels like Rook does not get cards out of his deck as easily as Sal does. Do I want another charged barrage or maybe like an accelerant? I think I actually do want another one of these. I think they're pretty good. We have a number of ways of wounding people and multi-attacks add up very well with wounds. Hiku is dead on the ground and her contact could be here any minute. You get rid of any evidence that could lead to your misdeed and leave the area before anyone sees you. I do sort of wish that I could have remained hidden and just watched the contact approach and seen if maybe it was worthwhile to jump the contact as well, you know? All right, so it's been a it's been a pretty long one so far, and we're not even out of we're, we're not even to evening yet. So I think I'm actually going to call this one right here for the moment. Thank you all so much for watching, and you know, for your patience. <laughs> uh, when you come back next time, later today for Wednesday's episode, that's totally happening. Probably it's happening if I have any say. Uh, we will continue to navigate the impenetrable web of secrets and lies here in Grout Bog. And we'll see you then.